My pleasure and my honor to introduce my brother, Mark Machine. I uh, thank you so much, dear brother, and we're delighted to have you back. Today is a very special day in our country, and I think we'd be remiss if we didn't ask the, our veterans to stand up and let us celebrate you for just a moment. Oh. This is one of them. the uh, drug court uh, 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 history now is the recent uh, addition to uh, veterans drug courts. It started in, in uh, Boston, uh, in Buffalo just uh, last year and it's starting to take on a, a whole national swell and so many of the young uh, men and women who are coming back from uh, our, our service in Iraq and Afghanistan and elsewhere uh, in remote areas and under great stress and sometimes combat, of course, are, are being accepted back into the community in ways that we're far better equipped because drug court has been going on now just over 20 years. And I'm very, uh, I'm very uh, happy to have been associated with it almost from the beginning. It started in the Justice Department under President Clinton, and the idea was basically to not just save uh, uh, human lives, which it has done, of course, but to save some money, too. I heard Joe say that the the uh, investment is 20 to 1 return. It's actually 27 to 1, Joe, you know, in the most recent uh, estimates and your uh, uh, wonderful evaluations and, and statistics about what drug court has been doing over the last 20 years is extraordinary and, and Luzerne County is a reflection of the whole nation. We do have a 73 to 75 percent uh, success rate and non Say that word from... Thank you very much. <laughs> I, honest to God, I was not prepared to make any public statements here this day. All I was prepared to do was assign a couple of uh, eight by tens at no extra charge. Uh, <laughs> wonderful graduates that uh, that are here today, and, and so grateful for those of you with the courage to speak, and so grateful for, 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 to all of you for, for taking the program and this community. You know, you don't become a drug addict by uh, 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 accident. It takes a community an underground community, albeit, but uh, you don't uh, start out your first day of school and saying, I wonder who the drug dealer is or who I can form a relationship with that uh, we can have some uh, uh, something in common. Drug addiction is like, um, uh, in, in its worst form, is like going into a coma. And uh, it, 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 you know, I'm going to speak from personal experience, although this is a public uh, forum, but I'm in the program uh, of AA for 22 years, so I know from whence I speak. I was never a, uh, a, a, a drug uh, uh, participant, shall we say. Uh, that always frightened us. I came up in the 60s and that was kind of like, uh, we were always afraid we couldn't get back if we experimented with there. So I didn't have that problem, but I am also familiar with that, unfortunately, within my own family. It's no secret. So I come to this with a deeply personal uh, um, involvement and responsibility. Uh, so this I would say to you, and then I know that the, our participants, uh, <coughs> those involved in the program, know. Uh, maybe they wouldn't articulate it in the same way that I might now. But I say to you, parents and family, friends of, of people in addiction and now in recovery, there's something that you really have to fundamentally understand in order to, to really understand what your friends, your family, your children are going through. And that is, the idea of, of beginning an addiction is an effort at transcendence. For lack of a better word, it is a, a quest for a higher level of consciousness. It is a quest for spirituality. It is going in deep inside to try and find the one, the other, the mystical God, if you will. And I say that in a purely secular term. But that's it. How often have some of you met someone high on drugs or alcohol and said that they had seen God? I have not the slightest doubt that they have. However, that apparition belongs to the substance, not the individual. 
What rehab does gives the individual, uh, those that have uh, succumbed uh, to the drug or the alcohol, an opportunity to find that transcendence on their own. And again, this is where the community uh, comes in. You can't take that step. You can't have that kind of insight without somebody that's been there, done that, and leads you into a light place. People take drugs because they are uh, have a very uh, uh, low self-esteem, or they feel unloved, or life is so painful that it, 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 they feel an effort to lessen the pain or heighten the excitement of life, because life on its own level uh, does not seem worth living. Uh, and so they, as I say, feel unloved. When they go through this program, when somebody that has been through the dregs has hit the bottom the hardest uh, and begins to come back and they begin to feel and understand that they are loved, uh, they have discovered fire for the second time. And that's what this program is all about. And that, the, the light from that fire is what leads and attracts others to them and to the program. This is a terribly important uh, aspect to understand is that the people most involved in the program and in helping those that are coming out of addiction are people that have been there and done that themselves. And so all of us that, uh, you know, that encourage the program or are part of this community are, 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 are compelled to support this effort. There is in the federal, you know, we were just up on the hill, I'm an associate of the National Association of Drug Corps Professionals, as, as was mentioned uh, by my brother Joe, and I, I, I have uh, for, for a very long time supported this effort. And uh, in, in the thing that I hate to do the most is go up on the hill and lobby, uh, you know, trying to get the funding. It's 36 and a quarter million dollars this year. That's our annual budget. And yet that only takes care of 10% of the need. Can you imagine? That's 120,000 people. You all know what it takes to qualify for this program. If you've committed a crime, you cannot have used a weapon or done any violence, and it's your first offense. And yet this program still returns to uh, the nation $27 to every $1 that's invested. There is no program on the federal level that is such a high uh, return. So, but of course what's far more important is the human level. And I'm sorry that I'm such a windbag as I say I wasn't prepared, but now that I'm warmed up. So I'm... <laughs> no, the bottom line is that we have to do this together. And the courage that these young people are showing is such an inspiration to me, and it will be, and I'm sure it is to all of, all of us, but the best is yet to come. You know, we're all responsible for each other and the world, which is exactly the way it is because consciously or unconsciously, we've made it so. And while none of us are responsible for the rules that govern the universe, we're all responsible for the rules that govern our own hearts and our own minds. And we're all recipients to those heroic people that have gone before us and assured us that the world is still a wonderful place and a safe place despite our fears, despite our doubts. And we're not asked to do great things. We're only asked to do human things and to do them honestly. And that's what drug court is. And so, the best I can do uh, here today, or if I can do anything at all besides signing an 8 by 10 for no extra charge, <laughs> is to encourage you to support this effort because it's really a, 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 a personal a dividend that you will share. And uh, I, you know, it's hard to find anyone in this country that is not in some measure connected with someone involved with addiction or recovery. Uh, so none of us are left out of this. We're all part of what we have made, and we're all uh, doomed or blessed to share the future that we've created. And so all, all I could ask of you is that you find something in your life, all of us, worth fighting for, because then you will have found a way to unite the will of the spirit to the work of the flesh, and that's how we stay balanced. And then we're all going to be able to help lift this entire nation and all its people to that place where the heart is without fear.
and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depths of truth, and tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary, desert sands of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom, my brothers and sisters, let us all awake. Thank you.